Welcome everybody to my presentation today titled Towards a Fully Integrated LCGCGC Tough MS Feed Platform to Unravel the Mosh and Moa Hunt in Food. So first, when we talk about mineral oil, uh, we refer to a, uh, a product generated uh, uh, from uh, uh, petroleum composed mainly by two fractions, mosh, mineral oil saturated hydrocarbon, composed by several uh, subclasses, normal isoalkane and cycloalkanes, and MOA mineral oil, aromatic hydrocarbon, mainly composed by alkylated aromatic uh, hydrocarbons. So from a toxicological viewpoint, we know that MOA can be genotoxic, mutagenic and carcinogenic, but most of the information that we have are based on uh, parent pHs and a full toxicological evaluation of the MOA is still uh, lacking. We know that the toxicity depends mainly on the number of uh, rings, with the 3-7 rings uh, uh, the one of more concern. On the MOSH side, the effect is still um, not completely clear, but we have evidence that they can uh, uh, selectively accumulate in human body. Therefore, there are needs, um, there is needs for uh, more study on exposure and a full characterization of the subclasses within the MOSH and the MOA uh, fraction. Mineral oil can contaminate food through different sources. Here we have an overview of the different possibilities and we need to stress that it's also possible to find mineral oil as um, food grade mineral oil. So it means that the uh, MOA fraction has been removed, so the, the highest toxicological concern, uh, because some food additives actually contain uh, mineral oil. From an analytical viewpoint, motion MOA determination can be very long and uh, cumbersome procedure and often we can arrive at the end and realize that we need to uh, start all over again because uh, for the specific metrics that we are analyzing, for instance, some uh, um, unexpected interference were present in the MOA fraction or in the MOSH fraction that are um, affecting uh, the uh, correct uh, quantification and determination of our contaminants. But let's do a, a step backwards to understand uh, uh, all the analytical procedure. The story of mineral oil determination is tightly related to the development of the LCGC technique. Indeed, the on column LCGC uh, uh, hyphenation was first presented in 1984 and in 1989, so shortly after, the first um, occurrence of mineral oil in food was uh, reported by the same group. In fact, by chance, uh, analyzing uh, uh, food for uh, uh, food irradiation marker, a, hump, a characteristic hump of mineral oil was found uh, in a hazelnut uh, sample, as well as the presence of uh, free stain and fetain, which are marker of mineral oil uh, origin of the hump. And shortly after, it was understood that this contamination would, was coming from the Utah bags, where the, uh, the hazelnut were uh, stored and transported. But it's only in 1991 that the first systematic study on the contamination of mineral oil in food appeared and we start to see all around this kind of hump trace characteristic of the uh, MOA, uh, of the MOSH contamination uh, and back then only the MOSH uh, was uh, considered. Also, the, the presence of mineral oils in food uh, has been known since 1991. It remains kind of hiding into the scientific literature uh, until 2008, slice nine, um, when first a uh, sunflower oil was found highly contaminated with mineral oil, and then a series of scandals explode because food were found contaminated due to the migration of uh, uh, mineral oil from um, cardboard packaging uh, to uh, arrive uh, to, to the latest scandals uh, published in 2019 on the presence of MOA in baby milk. All these scandals to the public opinion uh, lead to the development of an efficient 
RCGC analytical method for the determination of both MOSH and MOA in food that was published in 2009. This method uh, is a uh, really uh, uh, bright uh, and smart method because it uses a bunch of internal standards to delimit uh, the MOSH fraction and for control and the MOA fraction and to control at each analysis the performance of the entire system to uh, so check for the loss of volat uh, volatiles during the, the transfer from the LC and uh, the GC, check for possible coalition and also uh, allow the quantification thanks uh, to the internal uh, standard uh, strategy. So despite a, uh, a general resistance toward the LCGC technique at the beginning because it was considered too complicated. Now this method uh, has, uh, is routinely used for motion mode determination and it's also being indicated by the European Union as the best performing solution. So it has acquired general acceptance uh, in, the, in the field of mineral oil analysis. So one of the hottest topic in motion mode determination that is treating the reliability of the uh, data generated is actually the lack of a conformatory method involving the use of an MS detector, detector as required by the European decision 2002-657. In fact, for this determination, we use FID for quantitative purposes uh, because it's giving us virtually the same response factor regardless the kind of hydrocarbon that enter the detectors. But of course, FID is not a selective detector, so we must guarantee that only motion MOA enter the detector itself. On the other side, MS gave us the, the selectivity desired, but the response factor um, is not the same uh, according to the different kind of hydrocarbons, and a proper standard for calibration is uh, not available. So this is a very uh, important discuss discussion in the literature, so the lack of a conformatory method, what we should use, FID or MS, how we should handle this. Recently, uh, there was a method that proposed the use of GCMS and to monitor the, um, the ratio of specific ions, uh, but as you can uh, see, the ions here reported for uh, the motion, the MOA fraction, are actually um, poor selective ions uh, and they can be uh, generated also by other uh, natural hydrocarbons uh, in the case of MOSH for instance and uh, by the uh, fragmentation of terpenes, terpenoids and carotenoids etc. has interference of the MOA. So um, the use of GCMS alone is not a, a, a big support for uh, confirmation. It is a start but it's not enough. So the most suitable solution was already proposed in 2012 by the uh, European Food Safety Authority where they uh, stressed that LCGC was the method of the routine method for uh, mineral oil determination but they also suggested that the GCGC uh, is uh, the most effective uh, method uh, for uh, confirmation. But we disagree with the sentence where they say that this is for uh, limited practicality from uh, a routine uh, uh, viewpoint. In fact, we think that um, GCG... So what we propose is the use of a GCGC system with two secondary GC columns, one coupled to the FID and one to a uh, time of flight mass spectrometer with the flow diverted uh, uh, roughly 50-50 between uh, the two detectors. As the first goal, we verified that the split ratio between FID and MS was a constant over all the, uh, the analysis, the range of carbon required by the JRC, so up to C50, and we showed that uh, uh, the variation was within the experimental uh, uh, variation. We showed that we were able to elute up to C50, exploiting uh, uh, the two displays uh, uh, in a very similar way in FID and MS. Roughly 90% of the 2D space was, uh, was used. Uh, but more importantly, we obtained two, uh, the two, 2D plot in FID and MS that, uh, where the retention time matched almost perfectly and this was proved with the use of the internal standard for motion mode determination and as well also the uh, general performance uh, parameter of the 
uh, two GCGC uh, systems that we obtained uh, were comparable. Once we obtain our 2D plots, uh, we can uh, use the information from the mass spectrometer to draw the classification. So, uh, draw the geographical area where our subclass of motion more are uh, eluted in the 2D plot, and this can be uh, easily automated uh, in the data processing uh, method to be applied at every single uh, sample that we analyze. Furthermore, we can use a, a additional uh, tool called spectral filters, where we create uh, um, we create uh, rules based on the uh, mass spectral information, and in this way, we can uh, easily highlight the compounds within the specific uh, classification area that actually belongs to that subclass. And uh, so we have highlighted uh, with the color that is the same uh, of the classification area, the compounds, for instance, that belong to the monoaromatics, uh, and uh, we do not highlight what is actually an interference in that uh, uh, elution area. As for instance, in the case of uh, the true aromatics and the, ben the, uh, the benzothiophenes. So here we have a, a complete coelution of the two fractions, but thanks to the spectral uh, filter rules that we apply, we can uh, classify each peak as it belongs to the true aromatics or the, the benzothiophenes. So the template created using the classification and the mass filter uh, tool that we have just seen, seen uh, can be then easily translated uh, from the MS to the FID for quantitative uh, uh, purposes. So let's see some samples just to make the point of um, how our system and approach uh, will work. Uh, I'll show you an example on uh, spices and one on palm oil. So let's start with the spices. On the left, you have the LCGC trace, where expert high can recognize the presence of posh as a smaller hump sitting on top of the main uh, hump uh, of mosh. Uh, posh are an indication of migration from um, plastic food contact material, and uh, uh, the strategy, the normal strategy, is to subtract. Uh, uh, whatever is a uh, shaped peak sitting on top of the hump. Uh, but of course, um, some uh, uh, interpretation, uh, sorry, some spaces lead to interpretation, and thus it can affect the reliability of the quantification. On the right side of this slide, you can see the GCGC plot of the same uh, sample, and you can see how the posh are um, clearly separated on top of the uh, 2D plot, so we can quantify the mosh uh, without any interference uh, of, uh, uh, of the posh, and moreover, we can have a, a class um, characterization of the subclass of, uh, uh, of the mosh, which are useful from a, um, for a toxicological evaluation. On the MOA fraction, uh, we see on the left uh, the HAN characterized by the presence of uh, uh, DP HAN, uh, misopropyl naphthalene, which are marker of uh, contamination coming from recycled uh, paperboard. On the right, we have the same MOA fraction uh, injected in GCGC, and we can, uh, um, of course, provide uh, a characterization of the subclass, so mono, D, and three aromatics, uh, used for, for a toxicological uh, evaluation. Uh, we can also give a, a, a confirmation using the MS of the presence of uh, DPN, so uh, to confirm the presence of marker of a recited uh, paperboard uh, origin. Moreover, uh, thanks to the power of the uh, time of fly mass spectrometry, we can also detect the presence of sulfur containing components, which are a uh, marker of a Utah bags uh, uh, contamination. On uh, the palm oil uh, sample, yeah, we have the mosh fraction again, so we have uh, the hump of the mosh that can be uh, easily characterized in the GCGC plot. We can also highlight the presence 
of the old paints with our marker and for confirming the petrogenic origin of uh, the uh, contamination on the MOA uh, fraction uh, again we can highlight the presence of the benzothiophene uh, marker of Utabex uh, contamination as well we can see the presence of uh, uh, few compounds classified in the area of the aromatics but uh, that are actually not classified within the, the aromatics according to the mass spectra filter that we saw uh, before. So the question is what are these compounds? Well, they are actually they were actually identified from the uh, MS as terpenoid derivatives. So these samples undergo an epoxidation uh, step to remove the interference sitting on top of the MOA hump. And the question is now is does the epoxidation really work or we are still overestimating uh, the contamination of MO because we haven't removed completely uh, the uh, terpenoids uh, derivatives, so the interference, terpenoids, carotenoids, and so on. So where are we going uh, with uh, Moshe and MOA uh, from an analytical viewpoint? We wish to stress that LCGC was a technique almost abundant uh, back in the ninth and of the 19th uh, because considered too difficult and uh, um, nowadays it has been widely accepted as the routine method for mineral oil uh, determination. So on the other hand, uh, we uh, do not understand the difficulty on uh, accepting uh, GCGC which has been proved to be very effective uh, to, um, to tackle and to support uh, uh, the uh, uh, this, the resolution of many problem, problem in uh, uh, mineral oil uh, determination. So we think that it's time to accept also GCGC at a routine level, uh, at least for confirmatory uh, purposes. But actually we also have an additional goal which is uh, to merge the routine LCGC method with the uh, use of GCGC as a confirmatory method and have a unique, uh, a, um, a unique platform to perform both routine and confirmatory analysis. And here, he is, uh, here there is this uh, platform merging the LCGC with the GCGC, so we have a uh, completely hyphenated LCGCGC FID TOF MS uh, platform for mineral oil analysis and we are now working on uh, uh, validating uh, the um, quantitative approach using uh, uh, GCGC uh, plots. So some preliminary results that I wish to uh, show you. Uh, we build the calibration curve uh, both in 1D and 2D and we compare the uh, limit of quantification of the two systems uh, and we obtain roughly uh, 5 nanogram of, uh, uh, of mineral oil injected uh, uh, in the column. We use here an AX print and a paraffin uh, standard, so with two um, clearly different uh, carbon range, and we also compare the, the uh, quantification with some real samples, obtaining, as you can see, uh, very similar uh, results. We still need to adjust some uh, strategy for the removal of the compound sitting on top of the hump, but we are getting uh, uh, there. So in conclusion, why we think we should move towards uh, this direction? Um, we have seen that we can reduce the sample uh, preparation manipulation, which means uh, also um, less probability of cross-contamination during manipulation. We can easily subtract uh, the, the presence of interference such as POSH from the MOSH fraction, and we can tune the sample preparation once we uh, can easily highlight what interference we, uh, are still uh, uh, present. Moreover, thanks to uh, the capability of the uh, TOF MS uh, for detecting marker, we can uh, um, support uh, the study of the contamination sources uh, and so uh, support the uh, prevention strategy for avoiding uh, uh, contamination in food. And we can also provide uh, uh, additional insight for a, a detailed toxicological uh, evaluation of uh, the MOSH and MOA uh, fraction.
So I wish to thank, first of all, my research group, without which anything would have been possible, the sponsor that supports this group, uh, this work, LICO and uh, RESTEC, and last but not least, of course, you for your attention. Thank you.